And then right then, um, the CEO, Eric Smith, jumped in and we started iterating on the art of the possible. And we, lit we, we literally sort of drew up SCAPA and now we're playing it out. For me, it was definitely a move that I wasn't expecting, but I'm so happy I'm here. You know, at Saab, our mission is to keep people in society safe. Yeah. And so you and I, we, we wore the uniform. That's what we were doing in the uniform. For me, this is less a job and more a mission. This is All Quiet on the Second Front, a podcast where boring conversations around defense tech and national security come to die. Join me, Tyler Sweat, and my Second Front comrades as we dismantle the mundane, cut through the bureaucratic BS to demystify the world of defense tech. But be warned, this is not a typical government podcast. Ready to get weird? All right, what's up, everybody? I'm your host, Tyler Sweat. Welcome to another episode of All Quiet on the Second Front, the podcast where boring defense talk comes to die. Uh, really excited to have a guest in today who I think I've admired from afar initially and now am fortunate to get to collaborate, learn from, and work with. Um, so really excited to have Michael from Saab over here. So Tyler, really good. Really uh, happy to be here. Actually, the feeling's mutual. I've I've been watching what you've been doing at Second Front, and I'm I'm really excited about the partnership we have together. Heck yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. Um, so for the few people listening who don't know, kind of your story mm -hmm. and the trajectory, can you let them know kind of who are you, a little bit of the background, career, and sort of where you are now and what you're working on, and then we'll use that as sort of a jump off point. Yeah, absolutely, Tyler. So my name is Michael Brasser. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Saab, Inc., and also the GM at SCAPA by Saab, which is a new effort we launched there, and I'll talk a little bit more about that yeah. later. Uh, but I, I just wrapped the 26-year career in the Navy. I was uh, captain of ships, of two different ships, uh, had tours at the White House, the Pentagon, uh, the U.S. Mission to NATO. And it was at the uh, U.S. mission to NATO that I started to uh, create within the within the government. We started working on a project called the NATO Maritime Unmanned Systems Initiative, which really was trying to leverage robotics and artificial intelligence to get after some key capability gaps that NATO was facing in, in the maritime domain. And then I and then I moved out to Bahrain. And I was supposed to be the commodore of a task force of about 20 ships out there, uh, Task Force 55. But as we got out there, uh, we, we were faced with a challenge. And it's, this is the classic case of necessity being the mother of invention. Yep. Um, large area to cover, uh, limited assets. Uh, we looked at robotics and artificial intelligence to address some of the key challenges out there. And from this, uh, Task Force 59 was born. And so I uh, stood up Task Force 59 with Admiral Cooper and a great team out there in Bahrain. Um, and as I wrapped that tour up, um, I was planning to go to NATO and help Deep, Deep Chana uh, stand up Na NATO's Diana, the De Defense Innovation Accelerator for the North Atlantic. And then I got a call from Saab, you know, just kind of out of the blue. Yeah. And uh, we started iterating on this idea, which we were calling at the time uh, Saab X, but ultimately became Skapa, yeah. uh, which is Swedish for to create. And so here I am. I'm, I'm really happy to be here and, and teaming with you on some exciting work. Yeah, I think um, I'm excited to dig into a couple a couple aspects. Right, I think mm -hmm. there's there's a really cool story arc around building teams and new organizations and the culture to kind of be doing new starts inside larger organizations, mm -hmm. whether that's SCAPA inside of Saab, Task Force 59 inside of the Navy. Yeah, like there's an aspect around kind of emerging technology and all that. But I want to ask sort of the first question, which is, you know, as you watch your career, you know, the White House and the mm -hmm. Pentagon and NATO and leading this sort of cutting edge transformational task force in the Middle East, I think when everybody imagined you on the other side, I don't think anybody thought Saab. And that's not a knock on yeah, Saab in yeah. any way. I just don't think anyone had had sort of put the two together. So yeah. talk a little bit about that, kind of why Saab and you know the, the, the path. You know, I didn't expect it either. I got a very sort of thoughtful email from uh, one of the GMs there. And he, the email said, hey, I'm sure you have a bunch of offers. 
but would you consider working at Saab? And let me tell you all the reasons I love it. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll entertain the conversation. Yeah. And then right then, um, the CEO, Eric Smith, jumped in, and we started iterating on the art of the possible. And uh, and we, lit we, we literally sort of drew up um, SCAPA, like I said, at the, at the time it was Saab X, over a series of weekends. Uh, you know, he was... We would meet every Saturday, uh, and and we sort of drew this up, and and now we're playing it out. So it's for me, it was definitely a move um, that I wasn't expecting, but am so happy I'm here. You know, at Saab, our mission is to keep people in society safe, yeah. and so you and I, we we wore the uniform. That's what we were doing in the uniform. For me, this is less a job and more a mission, and um, that. to to do this at a company which makes just amazing kit, just amazing kit. Obviously, we have a lot of stuff in, in Ukraine doing very, very well, but brilliant, uh, brilliant engineers and the opportunity to create and scale was really appealing to me. Um, and so, so here I am. I'm very, very happy to be here. It's been about 18 months, and it's been an absolute thrill ride. Yeah, it's been an absolute it thrill seems ride. Like it. I thought I might, you know, obviously I miss the folks I worked with yeah. in the Navy, uh, but I'm learning so much here. It's so it's it's so rich in terms of the mission, but also the food for the brain. Yeah. I'm just having a blast, Tyler. I really yeah, I don't am. think you can under under undervalue or, or understate the the joy that comes from being in a job where you're just continually. Yeah. Every time I see a friend, they're like, "How's it going?" I'm like, "I'm learning like a semester, an hour right now." Yeah, <laughs> it's I, just I, awesome. I told Eric, I, you know, after my first year, I said, "Eric, you know, look, I I learned more in this first year than I did in the final five years yeah. in in the Navy." So right. it's it's such a rich um, growth experience. Yeah. And then I get to work with amazing people. That was going to be yeah. that was exactly yeah. going to yeah. be the next question. Is, yeah. You know, to talk about that, you talk yeah. about this this awesome sort of ecosystem and sort of flywheel you're building on yeah. the inside there. Talk about the team and the culture and all of that. Yeah. So one of the first people I called uh, when we were putting this together was Rob Murray. Yep. Rob Murray was the head of innovation at NATO. He created NATO's Diana. He's the man. The NATO Innovation <laughs> Fund. Yeah. You know, if you can get over his accent and his uh, dry sense of humor, he's a great guy to work with. Uh, so, you know, Rob and I were, he was helping me kind of sketch it out. And then Julia Allen, this brilliant uh, PhD who was already at Saab. And I told, uh, I told Eric, if, if, if I do this, I would like her to join, join the team. And she was um, promoted to CTO. Uh, Julia Allen is is an absolute rock star, PhD in explainable oh, yeah. AI. Awesome. Uh, we are doing a lot of very important work in responsible AI and yeah. explainable AI. And then we had this opportunity to to pick up um, Crowd AI. Yeah. And David Kiraj and Paige Castlin and and their rock star team. And so we made an acquisition. Uh, huge in terms of the, obviously the product is very good and you're helping us yep. get that up to the high side and really making it a quite a sec exceptional um capability to yep. the end users and for those who aren't familiar it's um it's computer vision uh deployed to the edge uh no code so the end user can update it and keep it uh, current and then and tyler's helping us get that up on on the high side so yep. really exciting there uh, but Devaki is a is a force of nature. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with her at Task Force Fifty Nine, and she's absolutely brilliant. Uh, but you can't out hustle uh, Devaki. And and um, and in addition, we've got um, Paige Castlin. Paige is is kind of like um, my version of Sky and Sophia Half that I had at Task Force Fifty Nine. She's the chief of staff, but um, She's she's my partner. She helps me with um, with everything. Uh, keeps everything sort of running on time, and yep. we do, we just try and make the page happy, yep. right? And then it's we, one of the most underappreciated yeah. roles until you meet a good chief of staff, yeah. and you're just like, holy shit, yeah, this is what it's supposed to be, yeah. 
and everybody who sees that and is thinking, hey, this sounds like a, a nice to have sort of ancillary. If you are running a oh. high performing, like no fail team, you are crossing time zones and jurisdictions and compliance regimes. The most important thing is the what gets referred to as like the blocking and tackling and sometimes yeah. is dismissed as like lower order. That is the stuff that will make you win or lose. And a good chief of staff ensures that that is an enabler. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And 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 Paige's EQ, obviously she's she's brilliant in terms of IQ. She's a Carnegie Mellon, you know, a master's in electrical engineering. Uh, but her EQ is off the charts, off the charts. And then we got a uh, you know a couple other um, really. Well, we got a rock star team. I could we could spend the whole thing. Unbelievable team. But I did want to mention yeah. Pete Mirasola, world class operator who leads our naval autonomy, and then uh, Divesh who leads a lot of our work with the DARPA and O and R. So yeah. really, just a, a fantastic team. Um, yeah. And so take it from there. You come fifty nine. You come in. You sort of sketch out mm. Sabex and mm. what the art could be. Mm. Talk about putting this killer team together. You know, go do an acquisition. So pop the hood a little bit. What is, you know, it's gone from Sabex to yeah. Scapa. So one of the one of the things that uh, we wanted to focus on was solving key operational problems fast. Yeah. Okay. Where there's an ongoing war in Europe, an ongoing war in the Middle East, and the potential of a third in the Pacific, and we are. You know, we are focused, laser focused on solving key operational problems. And we have a process which we call the innovation, the SCAPA innovation flywheel. And it starts with the problem. And then the first phase of this process, it's a four f phase process, is imagine, right? Um, imagine novel solutions to that particular problem. And the way we do this is we, we look at the problem from every single angle. And so the way I've built the team is to get diversity of experience where we have that, that problem covered from every single angle. This is the way I built the team at Task Force 59, right? I, I leveraged the Naval Reserves to do that. Um, and during this phase, the most important piece of technology is the whiteboard. Yep. The whiteboard is king during this phase, and we're all swarming on the problem. We're going to the whiteboard. We're drawing solutions. The next phase is called create, okay? It's one thing to, to do something on a whiteboard. It's a whole other thing to get it to a minimum viable product. Yeah. And so that, that takes hardcore engineering. That takes, you know, hardware, software, and all that coming together to create something that we believe can solve the operational problem. And this, and this is actually what SCAPA means in Swedish. SCAPA means to create. I, and, and I love to create, and I know you do as oh, well. Yeah. Then once we get an MVP, we iterate. So this phase three, iterate. We get it in the hands of the end user, in the operational environment, versus real problems. Okay, should sound very familiar. Yep. Uh, this is this is a lot of what we did at Task Force Fifty Nine, and we we rapidly iterate uh, with the end user versus real problems, and what we call the triple helix: government, academia, and industry. And we take this minimum minimum viable product to a scalable product, and you know that can happen in thirty, sixty, ninety, one hundred twenty days, but the there is a sense of urgency and a sense of pace and it, and there's, it's a collaborative. Yeah. And then the final phase is called intersect. And that's where we intersect the problem at scale. And this is the real beauty of working at Saab, right? Because we, we make fighter jets, we make submarines, we yes, make shit. car I drove <laughs> yeah, in high school, man. It was a nine three turbo. It was yeah. lethal. <laughs> yes, yes. And we, we used to make cars. We don't make them it's anymore. Damn good car. <laughs> Everybody loves their Saab, so we, we sort of embrace that. But that's what happened when a jet company makes a car. Yeah. It's badass. It's and, rocked. <laughs> and, and everybody loves their Saab. So we intersect the problem at scale, and then we're on, on to the next thing. SCAPA will, at that point, you know, envision a 
this becoming a program of record. Yep. That will go back into the business, that's and right. SCAPA will be on to the Pick next up thing. The next one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the that's the model. That's awesome. That's the SCAPA Innovation Flywheel. I like that, and I also like you know at the beginning when you sort of talked about that sort of like I even like just the the problem definition stage. Yeah. Focused on sort of diversity of problem solving or approach, and I think that is something that often gets overlooked is, hey, how do people think and what sort of analytical frameworks do they bring to the table? Yeah. I think anybody who's watched a few of these has seen me talk about like the Herman Brain Dominance Instrument, which huh. is it's a myers Bridge. It's a one of many sort of gotcha. tests. Gotcha. But it breaks down the quadrants of the brain. So, hey, here's ideation and strategy. Hey, here's like people and relationships. Here's, you know, data, numbers, here's mm. process, methodology. And, you know, I try to write sort of initial sort of problem statements mm. and ideas and build teams around that multi-dimensionality multi because I know I've got a bias towards yeah. idea and then I skew a little bit towards data and I'm like, cool, show me if this is working. And I loved hearing you talk about that there and then finishing with, and then we bring it into the business because my yeah. question was going to be, hey, that's all in good. Yeah. Innovate, 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 flywheel, flywheel, flywheel. But if you're the quarterback and you turn yeah. around to go hand that ball off and big sobs not coming up the coming well, up the gap there. And and we this is you know, my favorite innovator of all time, favorite is Leonardo da Vinci. And he will tell you uh, my favorite quote of all time is think well to the end consider the end first. Yeah. And so for the 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 Scapa fly, flywheel is focused on solving key operational problems at scale. Yeah. And Scapa can't do that on its own. Yeah. And so we need that big Saab machine behind us really preparing to scale and there's interconnectivity. I think one of the brilliant things that Eric did when he um well what no. <laughs> Uh, when he made me uh, the GM for Scapa, he also made me the chief strategy officer for Saab Inc. Yeah. And so I'm doing the five-year business yeah, plan. So you get to kind of cut both sides. Yeah. So, I, so I'm doing the five-year business plan for oh, Saab God. Inc. I'm, I'm dual-hatted. Yeah. Uh, and I'm connected. And so every, everything I do in Scapa is, is thinking about scaling and how do we grow the business? We're in a period of uh, enormous growth right now, yeah. and 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 uh, Scapa is a, a key part of that. So, as you um, you look out over you know the next twenty four months, next thirty six mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. you know, try to get us over the horizon of like, yes, I know there's an election next year. Yes, mm -hmm. I know that causes everybody some uncertainty. The election's going to be whatever's going to happen is going to happen. What are you excited about? What are you thinking about as you're planning into different sort of operational environments and realities? Um, you know, what we can you tease that yeah. it's, it's getting you out of bed in the morning excited? Well, I mean, I'm not just saying this because I'm on your podcast, right? I'm not, <laughs> I promise that the work we're doing together to secure our boat at the edge our autonomous boat the enforcer 3.1 which was awesome to get to see live by the yes, way yes yeah it's pretty <laughs> yeah, it's, it's freaking rad. Rad. i don't know we can cuss on this show oh yeah like it's the safe space right. yeah so um the work we're doing uh to secure that platform at the edge yeah. is so so exciting the work you're doing to secure devikey's uh computer vision platform at the edge is so exciting um, and then for me, it all comes back, um, to the humans. I, yeah. I, I, I just love this team that we've assembled. I think it's a world-class team. Um, I'm excited to create with them. I have some ideas of what we will create. Obviously we're doing a, a bunch of important work and responsible AI and ethical AI. There's an opportunity for us to lead in that space uh, we're obviously working on naval autonomy. Yeah. Um, that's a main effort. Uh, but I'm also, I love a blank whiteboard and really smart people swarming on problems. Yeah. So there's some stuff that we haven't come up with yet, but when we 
uh, when we swarm on a problem, we'll come up with some new new capability. Well, I don't think you can go wrong if, you know, one of the core tenets of the things you're mm-hmm. working on is bringing capability that's typically sat back at, you know, major installation yeah. or higher headquarters and hardening and diffusing that and democratizing that at the edge at the operator yes. level and putting that capability and that enabler directly in the hands of those who can immediately benefit from it. Mm-hmm. And that process is one by which you're bringing in a bunch of tier one teammates inside SCAPA, a bunch of operators yeah. outside of it. I don't think you can go wrong there, brother. Well, and it's why we planted uh, planted our flag in San Diego. Yeah. And uh, I told Eric, it has nothing to do that there's breweries. Pretty great, pretty great yeah. city. Yeah, it's the worst places to get stuck. So we were in between two breweries yep. in, in, in Point Loma, but that had nothing to do with the decision. It's, it's all about being close to Naval Special Warfare, you yep. know, uh, Surf Pack, uh, Ny- Nywick Pacific, yep. Navy War. So it's it's uh, U- Coast Guard, U.S. Marines. So yep. it's everybody's there, and then there's some really good industry partners. Again, yep. coming back to the uh, Triple Helix, great companies out there: Shield AI, Firestorm, yep. General Atomics. Uh, you know, I could go on and on. Yep. And then we're we're working on a partnership with UCSD that has us nice. very excited. So. Um, the triple helix right there in San Diego. And then we do a bunch of edge deployments, um, which we're very excited about. You know, David Key went out to CENTCOM, did the tour with CENTCOM. Um, and we're we're very much interested in getting around uh, the AORs. Yeah. So two questions, two last questions as we kind of turn that turn the corner here. One, just uh, I know there's a bunch of folks listen who maybe are earlier in their career who are mm-hmm. thinking about kind of what kind of leader do I want to be and how do I think about, you know, having an impact and building great teams and enabling. You've had a an awesome career. Yeah. Focused uh, in a bunch of, bunch of different manifestations around really harnessing great talent, yeah. getting it oriented on like a really tough problem and enabling it to the point that there's just lasting impact after lasting impact. Mm. What advice do you give you know, a younger sort of founder or service member who's saying, hey, okay, how do I how do I work my way into like hard problems that matter and how do I build community and constituency around me? Okay. Great, great question. And um I'm not good at a lot of things, but I am good at r- building rock star teams. Yeah. Uh you saw that really good at yeah. building <laughs> rock star teams, brother. Uh and so I I invest in relationships. I invest a lot in relationships. I take them um, personal. It's it's, but for me, it's about the mission. Yeah. And people that are focused on the mission, uh, like us at Scapa, uh, like you here at Second Front, um, when when you're focused on the mission and solving tough problems, uh, that attracts talent. You know, when I when I was recruiting talent out uh, to Task Force 59, I celebrated the problem. Yeah. And um, and then I promised a good mo- a good culture where we would move fast and focus on solving that problem. And that attracted amazing talent. I had two Forbes 30 under 30s out there at a Ph.D. on. um on uh, Chinese innovation uh, from Harvard, CEO of a $1 billion cybersecurity company, and then a lot of talent from the waterfront. Ray Miller, who I was just at his change of command down in in Norfolk uh, last Friday, you know, just an absolute rock star operator over 700 days of of sea time over the previous four years. So that combination focused on solving really tough challenges and then willing to take a risk. Um, there's one, you know, there's one person, uh, there's two people that I would like to highlight here. First, at Saab Inc., Eric Smith, my CEO, who took a risk on me. You know, I'm unproven in the private sector. And then Brad Cooper, who took a risk on me at uh, Task Force 59. Yeah. And, and, and both of them have taken a lot of risk on themselves. We were... We were running with scissors out there, you know, and we're doing the same thing at Scott. Yeah. And um, and that's 
that can be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. you could stab yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, focus on op- operational problems that matter. Invest in relationships. Swarm on problems. And have have fun. Take yeah. it. You got to have fun doing it. Yeah. Our last question is the king for a day. It's, I always end with a sort of structured one. Mm-hmm. So your king for a day, your Dumbledore for a day, whatever mm-hmm. your whatever your manifestation of sort of like mm-hmm. omnipotent power is, um, you can change one thing. What do you change and why? Is this re- with respect to defense innovation or? Yeah, I usually sort of pointed at sort of what we've been talking about. Yeah. So it's called like national security and technology sort of innovation. I would do anything that gets um, decision making and resource closer to the edge, yeah. closer to the problem. I like that. Um, I had the great good fortune, um, although it wasn't a ton of resource. I at, at Task Force Fifty Nine, I was the problem holder, and I and also had the resource to help solve the problem. Yeah. And that that connection was very very important. Um, of course, you always have to consider how does this scale, yeah. and um, and I think that's a very important consideration. So I understand, uh, you know, why certain aspects are centralized, uh, but what, with the pace that things are moving, I think the only way forward—not the only way, but one of the best ways forward—is to decentralize and move at the speed of heat, yeah. you know learn we we learned very very fast out there we you know we didn't have all the answers uh but we learned very very fast and we iterated and we improved and we're doing the same thing at scapa i I can guarantee you uh you know um from time to time eric's probably scratching his head about some of the stuff we're doing (laughs) there uh but we're learning and and we're creating and i can't imagine doing anything else yeah and it's it's interesting to hear you you can talk about get the resources to actually solve problems close mm-hmm. to the edge one of the i think like mind melting mind blowing things that i heard bonnie evangelista say when we were at an event maybe last year talking to all these different units mm-hmm. how do you engage mm-hmm. how do you talk to the community how do you support the operators she was like how many of your contracting officers have travel budget and can actually get out of the office yeah. and I was like whoa nobody raised their hand and I was like wait what she yeah. said yeah most of these contract like, and like bless their heart they just they're sitting behind a screen or a phone oh. or in a cube getting told what's needed without any of that context of getting out there and seeing it and being like oh yeah, I understand what you're trying to solve and you know I don't have to infer from paragraph 642 dash B54 there is no substitute in going to the edge. Yeah. There's no substitute in seeing and touching. It's one thing, you know, to put a lightning bolt on a PowerPoint. It's yeah. another thing to build a resilient mesh network at oh, yeah. the edge. And, you oh, know, yeah. we've, we've done all that. Uh, I, Tyler, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, it's football season. Yeah. And we're in the midst of a <laughs> great football season. And I don't get to do this often. So I wanted to take the opportunity publicly to celebrate both of our alma maters, yeah. uh, Vanderbilt, who just beat Alabama, and we're on a three-game winning streak, and we got Texas uh, this weekend, and big game, and, and Army. Yep. Uh, so you guys are seven, seven and zero. Oh, yeah, you got Air Force coming up. So yeah. the academy games are always, uh, yeah. There's no guarantees in those. Yeah. So, and then I also got to shout out Naval Academy, also um, undefeated. Oh, yeah, yeah. Killer program, yeah, great, great killer program. So, it's a uh, it's a good year for football. Yeah, oh, yeah. A really good year for football. Yeah, yeah. We could do a whole other show I was on just that. Say, <laughs> crack the beers open. <laughs> we'll go to the Scott office. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, uh, and and actually, we're going to be launching a podcast here in, a, in there. A, we go next month, and so we'd love to have you on it. Oh, I would love that. And this this podcast has really been an inspiration uh, for me uh, personally. I love the the conversation that you bring to this table. Thanks, um, it, it's very professionally done. You've got this great sort of radio voice, <laughs> uh, and you you go after you know important topics. So it's been an inspiration for us, and we you know we'd love to have you out there. I would be honored for the podcast. Yeah, thanks so, for coming in, brother. Like yeah. I said, it's a long time coming. Really yeah. glad to make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. All right, see you. All right, everybody. Cheers.